Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Teach Better Today morning show, where the Teach Better team gets to join you live every single morning, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern. My name is Ray Hewart, and I am so excited to welcome on a new face to our professional development network. So excited for you guys to meet her as she's traveling all the way from Oklahoma. We'll be right back to get into this conversation. Good morning. Happy April 25th. We have Andrea here with us. How are you feeling this morning? I'm feeling pretty good, Ray. Can't complain. Oh, I'm so glad that you chose to be on the show because it looks like you're doing amazing things and I'm excited for you to share all the wonderful things that are happening in education. So tell us a little about yourself before we get ahead of ourselves. Uh, My name is Andrea Cyphers. I'm the principal at Fort Gibson Intermediate Elementary in Fort Gibson, Oklahoma. Um, I was telling you a little while ago, it's our bicentennial celebration this week. So our sweet little town is very excited about that. Um, I grew up in Salisaw, Oklahoma originally. So like if you're a um, literature fan, the Grapes of Wrath, they kind of originated there. Um, I serve on our state's principal um, Oh, Ray, are you going to edit this? I'm sorry. I had a I can edit it. No, <laughs> so, but organization or board or yes, our state principal um, organization. I'm also the uh, state representative to the National Association of Elementary School Principals. I'm very excited. I'm wrapping up my first year in that. And it has been a wonderful journey and such a great opportunity to get to know principals from all over the country, um, not just in Oklahoma. And so just being able to have that perspective of things that are going on in other states is really wonderful. I love that you have not only chosen to be in such an important role at an elementary school, but then also looking at what you can do for, you know, the wider county, the state, you know, the, the, that's a huge accomplishment that only few educators choose to get involved in those beautiful networks that exist. And uh, I love that you've dedicated to, to, to sharing your voice in these organizations. Yeah, it's really awesome. And, you know, a lot of times too, it gives you the perspective of how good you really have it. Um, you know, it's really easy to get down on yourself and think about the things that you don't have, like funding and resources or anything like that. But um, really what what I have in our little district of Fort Gibson is pretty wonderful. And so it's nice to have that perspective. I love it. I have never been to Oklahoma, but maybe I'll need to come and visit your building just to take a tour and see all your incredible staff. I'm sure it'd be so fun walking it out of your classrooms. So. You come anytime. It's the happiest little place on earth. I love it. That's exactly what I want to be around. That is amazing. You know, some of our community here might be wondering how you get involved or find different organizations outside of your, you know, little bubble that many of us live in, in our communities. Any suggestions for educators thinking like, oh, I wonder if I should, if I should find like a nonprofit or community that I could be a part of that will kind of give me some perspective on either how good it is or maybe bring in ideas to my community that that don't already exist. I think that it's such a wonderful idea because everybody needs a support team. Everybody needs a square squad. Um, And so from my journey, my this is my fifth full year as a head principal. Um, I got involved with our state organization, um, COSA, and then the principal part of that is the Oklahoma Association of Elementary School Principals. And I went to the very first summer conference to get training because you realize how much you don't know in the beginning. And they just happened to have an opening in my part of the state for their executive board. And so I sat through the meeting and I was like, I am not qualified for that. I'm bringing nothing to the table, but ignorant bliss, which is, you know, fine your first year. And then later I started thinking about it and I was like, what a better opportunity than to to surround myself with these principals that have this experience and be able to glean from them, right? And go, hey, I've got this issue, I've got this problem, um, or I wanna start this, what pitfalls have you had that I could avoid? And so I sent an email and I was like, listen, I bring nothing to your table. 
<laughs> but a smile and a positive attitude. Um, and it just so worked out that um, they needed that position. So from the get go, I've just been surrounded by this wonderful community of principals that have been there for me. They've turned into some of my nearest, dearest friends that then turned into a spot with the National Association of Elementary School Principals. So it's a really great feeling. Like I was in Washington, D.C. for a conference not that long ago and was walking down the street and I was like, hi, I know you and you're from New Mexico. Um, so just wonderful opportunities to to get to know people and to be supported. Yes, I used to serve on a state board in uh, in Illinois, and I have to tell you, I felt the exact same way when I attended my first meeting. I walked in and I'm like, oh man, am I like out of my league? Like these people yeah. are so well educated. They know exactly what's going on. They have so much brilliance to share and very similar to you. I love that you, had, that you were able to share this perspective. I was like, I always want to be surrounded with people I can learn from. So if they're going to let me in the door, I'm going to take a seat at the table. Like I am dying to soak up all this knowledge. And I love that you shared that you didn't know what you could bring, but a smiling face. But sometimes that's maybe the missing piece. And then once you grow in a little bit to the community, there's a lot more that you have to share. I'm sure you, I'm sure you noticed that after the first few meetings, you were like, Hmm, I have, I have thoughts. I have a perspective on this and I've yeah. worked the room enough to like share my voice in that. And that's so exciting. Imagine like, the impact that you've been able to have on schools all over, not just your own. I'd like to think so. <laughs> I'd hope, I hope. And the, the, my predecessor in my position at Fort Gibson, one of the most amazing things that she ever said that kind of stuck with me. And it's just so simple that when you think about it, you're like, yeah, is that you have to share your crayons, right? You have to take all those things that you know, and you have to give them to the people that are around you let them learn vicariously through you because they also have something to share with you, but you, you have to share your crayons. If we're, if one of us is better, we can all be better. Oh, so good. So many takeaways already from this episode. Friends, if you are not involved in some sort of educational professional learning network or community outside of your school system right now, that could be a really great goal for this school year. 2024 could be the year for you to be looking around and saying, hmm, I might just like explore what options I have and anything to lend your insight and also gain insight from others is incredible incredibly beneficial. So I'm so glad you brought that up this morning. That's a great challenge for our community to consider as they head into their day. And we're going to jump right into our team talk segment, and get into some deeper conversation. We'll be right back. sticking with us. Again, I'm so glad that you're here to meet Andrea and learn about all that she has to share. We're also going to make sure you connect with her and add her to your PLN as at the end of the episode. Friends, don't forget that we are currently streaming on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, LinkedIn, and also this becomes an episode of Teach Better Talk podcast. So if you are in the Teach Better community, whether that means you're working with the team to learn better instructional strategies, or you're just a part of the global network of educators dedicated to better. We really appreciate that you're here. Andrea, in our team talk segment, we love to leave our listeners, our viewers with something to consider, something that you're passionate about that you really want to share. And I know you've shared so many things already. I even love the quote that I know many will be taking from this episode about needing to share your crayons. But tell us a little bit more about Maybe a piece of advice that you've said frequently recently or something that you just think educators should keep in mind as they head into wrapping up April and starting off May with success. Um, something that I think that people need to be reminded of often in every aspect of life, in school, outside of school, in dealing with students, in dealing with parents, with colleagues, with administrators, is that everybody deserves a little bit of grace sometimes. And 
probably one of the hardest things in my job was realizing that my 100% and that my staff's 100% are not always the same thing. And that's okay. You have to be okay with that. Um, because what might be your 75% really might be their 100%. And so that everybody needs a little bit of grace uh, to get through the day. My very first day of being principal of my building, my mom got diagnosed with brain cancer. It was not a good time. Um, so that really was not how I envisioned starting my first role as principal. But it's kind of one of those things that looking back, do I wish we could have avoided that whole situation? Absolutely. Did it make me such an empathetic person? Absolutely. Because everybody has got something that they're dealing with, whether they're able to leave it at the door or not. Um, some days it's heavier to carry than others. And so you just have to be cognizant of people and what they're dealing with in life um, and that they need some grace. Sometimes we all we all do. Um, that was also the year that COVID shut down. So it was a really great first year. <laughs> so great. It's been so much better since then. Um, but just, you have to give not, not making excuses for people, right? Everybody at some point has a job that they're, they need to do and kids that are on the line, but you have to be aware that people need some grace sometimes. Yeah, here in this community, we like to phrase that as giving your daily best. And your daily best might be 100% because you woke up and your coffee was warm and you had a great drive and you hit only green lights on your way to school and the kids got packed up all nice and everyone said love you and kisses at the door and you're just on a high living the best life ever. And sometimes it's not. Sometimes you wake up and you missed an alarm. Someone was crabby. You hit every red light. Your coffee spilled. And you may only give, you may only be able to give 60% of yourself that day. But if you can give all of what you have, it's still giving your daily best. And it can fluctuate throughout the day. It's amazing how one student coming up with the right type of smile or a big hug can really boost your energy. But really being aware that people are giving their best. And if it's not what you've seen in the past, there's probably a reason something else going on with them. And I love that that call to action, providing a little bit of grace when mm -hmm. you feel like that daily best should be a little bit higher than it was for I others. Think so too. And, you know, I think that it's so important because when you, you have those relationships with the people that are in your building, you're very aware of they're outside of their norm. Something is off with them. That's not how they, you know, they normally operate. Um, so it's just a little easier to kind of, to kind of keep track of your people and keep a, a, a close, a close eye and a, and a welcoming heart. Um, so that if they need someone to talk to that you're there for them. Sure. You know, our community here is full of all different educators are part of our educational ecosystem. We have so many principals that will tune into this conversation teachers, you know, everybody who kind of supports that whole ecosystem. And when we have our administrator mastermind group, which is when administrators come together on Tuesday mornings just to talk shop, share ideas. We have some guests that's been able to pop in in 2024. One of the, the main topics we hear week to week from administrators is the value of relationships. Any tips that you have for our community, maybe something that they haven't tried recently in terms of building and fostering those relationships with staff? Because as you know better than anyone, an administrator's job is never ending. The to-do list is long. And sometimes it's hard to focus on relationships when you have all these other to-dos on your plate. Absolutely. Um, something that we do here that's really kind of fun is um, we've started doing Bunko game nights. And our individual grade levels are really close within their own little, you know, community of their grade level. I, I'm, I'm for third, fourth, and fifth in my building. And so they'll get together and do grade level things. And just taking time to go ask people about their kids by name. I know what your family's doing on the weekends. I know what you guys, I know that your dog died and I want to come and ask you about that. Um, I know that you're, you're dealing with this. And I know that your kid had this amazing thing and they just signed to play college basketball. Um, so just being able to show your people that you genuinely care about them to the same level you expect them to care about the kids in their care. Um, I want to know what you're doing on the weekend. I want to know who you are as a human being. Tell me about your kid getting baptized. Tell me about your, you know, you were closing on your house and something was wrong and it fell through. 
Um, so just taking that time to see people as human beings and not always talking about the data, talking about the curriculum, talking about the school day, but just what are, what are you doing? How are you as, as a person? And I love that you're modeling the behavior that you want to see in other aspects of the building. That's such an important role for any educator in a building, not only our leadership staff, but but everyone truly choosing to model what they want to see day in, day out in their community is huge. For me, I used to always keep like a cheat sheet on my phone. Like I'd walk away mm -hmm. from a conversation and be like, okay, Andrea, two kids, this is what they're doing. To so that way, when I bumped into you again, if I had a moment to peek, I could be like, ooh, I should ask her about, you know, X, Y, Z. And it's, it's nice to have a little cheat sheet. I used to do it yeah. on my students too. Yeah, it's a great idea because they. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot of bodies in this building, so like, no, it wasn't your dog. Oh, I'm so sorry. How's your dog though? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love it. So good. Andrew, I want to make sure that everyone here gets to connect with you outside of the show, but also continue to learn from you and uh, maybe have some follow-up questions based on this conversation. Where can people stay connected? Um, I'm on Facebook as Andrea Cyphers, but I also have like an educational type page that I recently started yes. um, called The Grateful Principle. And it's just kind of a positive place. Right now, it's just kind of building up that community but I really would like to turn it into, hey, here's some issues that I dealt with this week as a principal. You know, here's some general ideas on how it was handled. And also here's some pitfalls that I made. I didn't handle myself very well in this situation. Learn from me, be better. <laughs> because we all like those opportunities where we can live vicariously through somebody else and save us grief and losing sleep at night. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm on Twitter um, at Cyphers Andrea. I had to flip flop it. Uh, to get it to work. But most of my things are just my my name, except for the Grateful Principal on Facebook. I love it. That Grateful Principal group will definitely be something I'll be joining. And for all of you who are a part of our Administrator Mastermind Facebook group, I know we have over 200 educational leaders over there. Or if you're a part of our Teach Better Facebook group, which is a group that if you're an educator, we love having all of you a part of. There's over 7,000 educators there. I want to see you jumping over to check out Andrea's stuff. Let's make that community a positive place, like another place for us all to continue to collaborate. So Andrea, thanks so much for coming on the show. This was such a fun conversation. Thanks for having me, Ray. I enjoyed every second of it. So fun. We will see all of you hopefully very, very soon. We'll see you tomorrow morning for Teach Better Today morning show. And then of course, Sunday, we have our show as well. Stick with us. And if, don't forget that if you need anything, we're here to help. Have a great day. Hey, Teach Better community. Thank you so much for joining the Teach Better Today morning show every single weekday at 7 a.m. Eastern. We have so many resources for you outside of this live stream at teachbetter.com, including blogs, podcasts, and professional development that will bring our team to your school. Wherever you are listening from this morning, please make sure you are sharing and celebrating the incredible educators in this world. And hey, if you are listening over on a podcast to Teach Better Talk, we would love a five-star review. <laughs> the comments are always so entertaining. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow.